Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just Few Acres Farm. Number one thing about today is it's hot. It started out at about 70 degrees at six in the morning. It's on its way up to 85. And in central New York, when it's hot, it's humid. 85 might not sound that bad, but us and the cows don't like it and we're gonna sweat. Today, we're gonna move temporary fences and put the cows in a new paddock over here. We're still grazing fairly large areas because the grass is short, two to three acres. So we're gonna show you what our temporary fence components are, how we set up the temporary fence, and of course, how much the cattle like to move. Stay tuned. And of course, for the cattle, this move can't happen soon enough. It takes us forever to set up the temporary fence, in their opinion. So first job is to set the posts, and we've gone through a bunch of different posts in our learning curve. This is the one that we used for quite a few years. It's plastic and we get them from Tractor Supply and heck, they're awful. I mean, the little clips break off, they bend and they stay bent if there's too much pressure put on them. They break and when they're broken, you can toss them in the recycling bin, but most of it's plastic and we all know what happens to plastic with a little metal spike. It's mixed materials. They suck, we don't use them anymore. What we went to using are these rebar posts. They are 3 8 inch rebar, and we did some field modifications or farmer modifications to them. We put a point on the bottom and welded an eighth inch piece of strap here onto this so that when we step in, this little thin chintzy thing doesn't bend. The nice thing about these posts is they're completely recyclable if they ever wear out, but if they bend, we can just bend them back. And the insulators for them, if they break, we can replace them. These insulators are just two-piece threaded clamp-on insulators, which are a little hard to get started sometimes. So you just put it on the post and tighten it down. And different from these posts, which have a bunch of fixed height ones, you can move these up and down to whatever height you want. I just pace these posts off. They're about 30 feet apart. I see these guys on other farm channels that are riding along on a four-wheeler and just stabbing posts into the ground as they go. There ain't any way that's ever going to work for us, and this is why. Our ground has a lot of rocks in it, and when it dries out, the ground is hard, so I ain't riding along sticking any pigtail posts in the ground from the comfort of a four-wheeler. We walk along and I push them in with my feet. I feel special having such a nice audience here. We learned our lesson on polywire too. We started out again with the cheap stuff from Tractor Supply and it doesn't deliver squat for a shock. It's got three cheap insulators wound into it and I could grab a hold of it, it didn't even bother me, it was just a little tick. So we went to using a product from Premier One, and actually most of our fence system is Premier One products. This is IntelliRope 4.5. It has, I think, six hot wires in it of different materials, and it'll really, it'll give you a jolt just like a, a standard wire fence if you grab a hold of it, because I know I have. We put a hook on the end of it here and just hook it to the wire at the end of the run. Um, it's nice because it's big and fat and the cows can see it easily versus the little thin poly wire and it's white so I think that that visual deterrent helps a lot. We wind it on these things which are called super reels from Premier One. They work pretty good. They have a nice bracket that goes with the system that I'll show you when we put up the end. It just hangs right on the end of the run and it has a built-in brake on it so you can tension the wire when you get to the end of the run using this brake lever here which engages with this little peg into these spokes and then you have a tight fence that stays tight without having to goof around with laying a rock on the end of the wire on the ground, ground out the fence or any of those sorts of things. These hooks are super nice because before we would have to wind the end of the fence around the hot wire and then you've got a zappy reel to deal with. This way, with these plastic hooks from Premier One again, 
the reel stays dead while you're unwinding the fence and then we can run a jumper at the top end of the fence to energize the fence once it's all up. Then for the end of the fence, we just drive in a regular old T-post with a special mount, which I'll show you. Oh my gosh. So this thing is also made by Premier One. It's a great way to anchor your reel to the fence post. It just goes on the T-post like this. And I measured about waist height. Then this slides on the back. These are really well made. The only drawback to them is you can only put them one way on the T-post and that's on the front of the T-post. And then the reel just hangs on like this and you can tighten it up and apply the brake and you have a tight fence. These alligator clip jumpers are again from Premier One. I give it two or three wraps around the fence and usually I do this before I engage the brake but two or three wraps to make sure it's hitting the hot wires in the poly wire. Clamp it down, tighten it back up. Clip it to the hot wire on the main fence and you're done. We're trying a little experiment with this fence because usually, and you can see on the fence post, we run two insulators for the front fence, which is the fence that's facing ungrazed ground. And then we run one wire for the back fence, which is the fence that protects them from going back on the ground that's already been grazed. Today, we're running one wire for the front fence to see how it works. A lot of people run one wire fences for beef cattle that are running in mob grazing situations, but I think the problem that we run into is Dexter's are short so they go under the fence if they really want the grass. As with any electric fence, it all depends on how much pressure is on the fence. If they have a lot to eat on this side of the fence, they won't bother it. If they're starving, they'll go right through it. The same applies for perimeter fences. That's why we only run minimal two-wire perimeter fences around our fields because the cattle have a lot to eat so they don't test the fence that much. Now the calves will go under the fence no matter what, one wire, two wire, they just have a mind of their own, but it doesn't really matter if the calves go under because they'll come back, so we don't worry about that too much. I've probably said this before, but as a farmer, it is so rewarding to let cattle out onto new grass. It's just that peaceful kind of happiness that you know you're feeding your cattle the right way. So the mob grazing that we do is a modified form of strip grazing. Now you saw us set up the first fence in this field and this field's about five acres so we are setting up about 50 feet in a strip going the whole length of the field as the days pass we'll be moving that front fence back along the field and then here in this in this access way because the way into the field is right here we'll be putting in a laneway which runs right along here and that laneway will form a big L, so the laneway comes along and then the back fence goes down to keep the cattle off of the area where we started grazing them. So every few days we move that front fence and we also move the back fence so that they're grazing in strips right down the field and they're off of this so it can start to regrow as they're moving down. Here's a nifty little trick I figured out, and I'm probably not the first one to figure it out. 
we make the gates to each of our fields out of these, which are just spring-loaded um, handles with wire on them. Well, I never knew what to do with them when we're leaving them open for weeks at a time when the cattle are in a particular field. I would hang them on the fence line and they would inevitably ground out on the ground or against a fence post. Well, now we just drive a T-post in, and this is here permanently, and then just hang these wires on the T-post. That keeps it away from the fence posts and the ground and is there for safekeeping until we want to close it up again. Moving temporary fence is a daily staple of life on the farm. So, as with anything that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis, you want to make sure that you're using quality components and that it's an enjoyable process. It's taken us some years to figure it out, but now I think we have it down. I hope this video was informative. Have a great day, stay cool, and I'll see you next time.